Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the sine and the cosine functions. And these are straightforward as well, especially now since you know about radians, because we'll be using those a lot in the near future. But uh, when it's typically first taught, it's taught based upon a unit circle. Remember, a unit circle has a radius of one unit like this. So here's my unit circle over here. It's got a radius of one from this point back to the center like that. Okay, so you can use these cosine and sine functions to find the points along a circle. And so in the older days when I wanted to plot a circle, that's what I would have to do. I'd have to take an angle, and in this case, this being an angle of pi over 4, or 45 degrees, I'd use this angle, and I would put those values into the cosine and the sine functions, and that would give me the x and the y point right there based on this angle. And then if I wanted another angle, say at 90 degrees, then I'd take this next angle, you know, up to here, 90 degree angle. I would enter that into my calculator. I would take the cosine and the sine of 90 degrees respectively, and it would give me that x and y point along here. Really straightforward. Well, so when it's taught, it's typically oriented with a triangle in this position. I'm going to show you a few things. They label, here's your right triangle, here's your 90 degrees, which makes it a right triangle. And then this side of the triangle here is the adjacent side. I'll just do ADJ for abbreviation. And then this side of the triangle here is called the opposite side. I'll do OPP. And then this side is the hypotenuse. I'll just do HYP for the hypotenuse. And the reason it's taught with the unit circle is because this has a radius of one unit as well. So that goes out to the circle, that's one unit. This goes as one unit. Everything that goes from the center to the edge of the circle is going to be one unit. And that value becomes important because a lot of times you'll see the way they'll define the sine function. They'll say the sine, you'll see it like this, sine is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we'll try that with a particular value here in a second. And I'll show you where this unit circle happens to be play a crucial part. All right, so sine is the opposite of hypotenuse. So they say, so basically it means the sine of whatever angle this is is equal to this opposite length divided by this length. Well, it turns out with a unit circle, that's 1. So this hypotenuse becomes 1. And that's why the sine of a certain angle is just equal to this value right here. So let's just do it by example. That gives you a better idea. So if you get your calculator and you turn it on, in fact, maybe I'll just grab a calculator here. I'll grab the regular calculator, PC calculator. And it has a scientific mode in here. And it defaults to degrees right here, degree mode. So you want to make sure you're in degree mode. And if I enter in, this is my 45 degree angle, or pi over 4 is this angle. So if I enter in 45 degrees, and I take the sine, let's see if it returns a value of 0 0.707. So what it's saying is the same, of, it's, it'd be as if I had said the sine of 45 degrees, like this, is equal to 0 0.707. So what's that, what that's giving you is that's giving you this distance up here along this edge because it's basically saying it's 0 0.707 divided by 1 all right so that's this distance and that turns out to be if we put in a coordinate pair this point right here has an x and y coordinate and for the sine value that's going to be the distance up along the y axis so that's going to be 0 0.707 right here okay now let's go take the cosine of this same 45 degree angle so I clear that, I put in 45, and I take the cosine of 45 degrees, and it's the same value, 0 0.707. So that's going to be the x coordinate, or the x value as well. So this point here is 0 0.707 in x and 0 0.707 in y, and that's essentially this distance along here. And so that's the opposite sign is also the same as the sine. And the adjacent side is also the same as the cosine, like this. All right. So, and it's important to know that the opposite side 
is the opposite side of this interior angle that we're looking at here because sometimes in future math your right triangle might be oriented differently it might be like this where this is your angle like this and here's your opposite side over here then suddenly your sine value is along this edge and your cosine value is along this edge all right so the orientation of the triangle just happens to be such that when it's typically taught this sine value is oriented along y that's why it's got a y value in this case but it's not always a y value in future studies just keep that in mind all right so then you can do the same thing sometimes of course you'll see somebody just put in a an expression you know well what's the sine of pi over four all right and so the sine of pi over four you'll know from the previous lessons is the same as the same as a 45 degree angle because here's pi over here and pi divided by four is going to be this same location here the same angle of measure and so that's also going to turn out to be 0 0.707 and the same with the cosine of pi over four is basically the same as a co as the 45 degree angle pi over four and that's also going to be 0 0.707 so you can find all the points along the circle just by plugging in these values. You know, you put, plug in the value of, say, 135 degrees, an angle that would be all the way around to here, like this. But that would be the same as, well, that'd be pi over 4, that'd be pi over 2, that'd be, yeah, 3 fourths pi would be that location right there. So you just have to make sure that when you enter in your values, like if if I work in radian mode in this calculator there's no way for me to just type in well maybe I could let's see if I can do pi divided by 4 equals so I've just did pi divided by 4 for this number and it gives me the radian value equivalent of 0.785 so if I take the sine of 0.785 there it is 0.707 and then if I did say here for the pi over 2 I could just enter in pi divided by 2, it gives me the radian value of 1.57, maybe I'll take the cosine of 1.57 is equal to 0, and that's because this triangle would be up here, but this x value would be 0, it'd be sitting right there, because your point on the circle is this, right? So your coordinate pair ends up being 0 in x and 1 in y, like that. And we'll look at that again one time on pi over 2 is pi divided by 2. It gives us a radian value of 1.57. We'll take the sine of 1.57 and it tells us the answer is 1. So there's your y value right there. So there was the x value and the y value. Alright, so that's how you find the points along the circle. And you could divide this up and that's how you might draw a pentagon. You could divide your circle, say if you were in degrees, you would divide 360 degrees divided by 5 for the 5 points along the circle and then you would have 360 divided by 5 is equal to 72 degrees then you would just take the sine and the cosine of 72 degrees or you would convert that in the equivalent of radians and then you would get the point along that circle then you would add another 72 degrees at 144 degrees and take the sine and cosine of 144 and you'd get that point and you would just continue going around and then there's a way you can do it so you can make it with larger circles just by multiplying your results by this radial distance. So in this case, you know, r, your radius, is 1. But if you have a larger radius, then you would multiply your larger radius times this value that's returned, and that would give you your x and y coordinate in a larger or smaller circle. Okay, well that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.